Hey there everyone. Welcome to another video here on the Jeff IT Guy channel. Uh, this video is going to be my failures and successes in installing um, or setting up my Ruby on Rails environment on Ubuntu. And so you're going to get to see some of the times that I failed, how I fixed it, and then ultimately at the end how I succeeded. And so if you don't know much about Linux, sometimes it can be unruly. Sometimes you have to kind of strangle and wrangle it in to get it to do what you want it to do. And with a little bit of perseverance, you can finally accomplish your task. And so at the end of the video, you'll see that I finally got Ruby on Rails working. Um, everything was up and ready. And so now we have a Ruby on Rails environment on our Ubuntu machine. And I hope you enjoy the video. Um, if you like it, leave a like. If you dislike it, leave a dislike. If you want to see more, subscribe and leave a comment if you've had any of these issues as well and how you overcame uh, the obstacle that was standing in your path when dealing with Linux. Adios. Firefox. And so we're going to be installing um, Ruby. Uh, this one here recommends 2.6.5. <clears throat> and so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and it's really simple. We're just going to copy paste a lot of this stuff. And so it will be an easy guide to follow. Sometimes you never know, though, how things are going to go with Linux. We'll go ahead and put in this. It's going to say, hey, I don't know what uh, Udo is. So we'll just type in sudo and type in our password. It's going to go ahead and it's going to start fetching things. All right, then we're going to switch back over to Firefox. And we're going to copy all of this. This will be used in Yarn to install a lot of our dependencies and everything for Ruby on Rails. Okay. It's not wanting to work. Let's do this line by line. Sometimes you, you have to do it line by line. Okay. So now we're going to continue with the installation. We'll update everything. Okay, we'll go on to the next line. Do all of this. We'll go ahead and paste this in here. And it'll go through and it will download and install all of the repository information. All of our dependencies and stuff that's needed for Ruby on Rails and for this installation guide. Sometimes if you, you might come into an error with these guides and when you do, the best thing to do, just Google it, look for a Stack Overflow article. More than likely nine times out of 10, someone has come across the same issue as you. So just go ahead and, and check out on Stack Overflow. There's, they got a lot of good help over there. Uh, if you have trouble as well, you can always leave a comment on this video and I will do my best to help you as well. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install uh, Ruby and stuff with RB environment. This is what's recommended. And then we're going to do bundler and things like that. So we'll go ahead and we'll copy this. And paste it. Okay. 
I'm going to go ahead and do this. Okay, so we're good there. And now we are going to install our Ruby environment. So apparently Ubuntu is already using um, a different build for Ruby, which is fine. Let's actually see what kind of, what Ruby version we have on here. So let's just do sudo. It'll go ahead and install for us. So you can always do sudo dash app um, install Ruby. Okay. So now if we type in Ruby dash V, we will see that we are running uh, 2.5, whatever it has. So now we will continue with our global. We might have to do sudo. So unfortunately, our guide did not specify that we had to install uh, Node and everything before we could actually install this other stuff. And so I'm going to link the guide to install uh, a different guide to install Ruby on Rails through DigitalOcean um, than what we have. So we need to install Node.js. Okay, then we need to install npm. version over okay let's go ahead and copy and paste this okay so we've already got that that's good we'll do this this and go ahead and just <clears throat> follow this guide and then we'll do top RV environment all right so now we need to install this Now we're going to do the RB environment install. Okay. This one says 2.5.1. We'll change that to 2.6.5. did the RB EMV install 2.6.5 from the guide 
And so we will cut. Okay, so there it is. It's installed. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do RB environment um, global uh, 2.6.5. Okay, we're good. We'll do Ruby dash V just like the guide says. And there we are. Okay. And the last thing that we want to do is we want to install bundler. This, so we'll do gem install bundler. And it will go ahead and boom install that gem for us. Next thing we want to do, uh, because that's just the Ruby environment, that's Ruby itself, we want to install Rails. And so we're going to do gem install Rails. And this is for version 6. So it is a dash V 6.0.0. We'll go ahead and install Rails. And it could take a little bit of time. And so I will cut back to when it is. Okay, so Ruby had the Rails is installed. We've installed the gem. Next thing we're going to type in is RB env rehash. All right, now we're going to check and see what Rails version we have. And we are on Rails 6.0. In the guide, you will see that it gives you the option to do MySQL or PostgreSQL. For my purposes, I'm not going to do this. Um, I don't use either. Now, I am familiar with both of them. I've used them with PHP and, and Java. But however, I'm going to be using SQL a lot for anything that I do on this channel. <clears throat> and so the next thing we need to do is we're going to do a new app. Okay, and so if you'll see in this guide, it says uh, using SQL is not recommended. However, I don't care. <laughs> so we're going to say Rails new, and we're just going to call this um, test app. Okay, and so it already says that um, I've got a new one. Or I've got one. I'm just going to type in yes to redo it. Oh, you have to say, you have to give it a why. Okay. To lock all the stuff. There we go. It's going to do this thing. Boom, boom. So what we need to do is we're going to do bundle install. And this is going to install any of the missing gems that we have. Uh, it says it couldn't find the whatever. So let's look at LS here. We need to go to our test app as you see it. So it's CD slash test app. In here, we should be able to see anything. So let's try running bundle install in here. And it should work from in here. Which we can go ahead and add this stuff. So we'll do bundle update. Rails can be a little bit cantankerous. There we go. Now we're, now we're cooking. So it's going to do all these gems and everything. Go ahead and update all of our stuff. Put it to where it needs to be. Yep, I know. SAS is, is done for. Okay. So here we are. We're in here. So we've got our, got our, uh, our app. So we can actually go into our text editor here. And I am going to use Sublime text so we'll open this up and then we can open up our test app so we want to open folder and it is under home test app open and here we are this is our 
our Ruby, our Rails. This is our application. Now there's there's things that we have to do um, to go further. We would have to, you know, set up a new controller um, and everything like that. So we successfully installed Rails. Let's switch back to the terminal. Make sure that our Rails server is going to work. So you just type in Rails server. And then so it wants us to install it. We've had a time with getting this working, but I do believe that we will finally be able to see that our Rails server is working. And we'll have to do Rails Webpacker install. And I do believe that we will finally, finally have a working Ruby on Rails environment on our Ubuntu machine here. All right, let's see if it works. Yes. It's localhost 3000. Woo! We have a working Rails environment on Ubuntu.